All right, YouTube, what is going on? It is Conflict Nerd Callum here today, bringing you another episode of my Airline Tycoon Let's Play. So this is strange, actually, and there's not been a sabotage incident. A day without a sabotage incident, I cannot believe it. Especially at this airport, especially with Sunshine Airways, I think is the worst. Phoenix Travel, they aren't much better, but we've got our backs covered, but they're always annoying each other. So maybe they've gone ahead and up security eventually, and maybe they've learned their lessons. Anyway, so let's have a look. Oh, that's just so pretty. Like the amount of money that each plane is gaining is just absolutely insane. But in this episode, what I want to do is go ahead and pretty much buy three planes. That's the aim, which is going to be a lot. So we're going to have to buy more gates. We're going to have to buy a lot more of everything, to be honest, because I want to go ahead and... Right now, we've currently got one plane assigned to the Berlin-London route and one plane assigned to the Berlin-Paris route, but I want to double that and go ahead and give them two planes each. So for that, we need uh, more expansion in the airport. So one million sounds... F oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I clicked the wrong option there. Okay, I'll be okay with that. So we need to go ahead and pay a million for that, but I'm totally happy. We'll probably need about two more gates to support three planes, actually. We're going to go ahead and look at the planes that I am going to buy, but then I won't be able to buy them yet anyway. So one of the new planes I want to buy is a new Galaxy for Transatlantic. We'll definitely do that at some point, but I need to think about what, I guess, European plane I'm going to have. So a plane which can go relatively fast, can carry a large amount of passengers, and it's got a range of, it only needs to be less than a thousand. However, it'd be good if it could be like 3,000 like this one. And this is probably looking like the ideal plane, actually. The only thing I don't like about it is that it maybe could do with some more passengers. Passenger numbers could be higher. That's the only thing I'm looking at. Passenger numbers would be great to see if it was maybe near two, three hundred, but at the same time, the distance was small. That would be the dream because that would be probably my price range. So I'm looking through the list here, and there's nothing really which tempts me too much. This here actually isn't that bad for 17 million. That could carry 380 passengers, which is an insane amount. However, it couldn't reach New York, so I couldn't deploy that on the New York. But that could work in Europe for sure. And it's also got a faster speed as well, so it would mean flights could be shorter. Similarly, this one here is not too bad, but it costs a lot more money. This here's quite nice as well, so there's a lot of different uh, different planes that I could go ahead and buy. But that's a good shout from my London routes actually, so 380 passengers, definitely. Even just buying one of those would be absolutely wonderful, and it could help out with both the Berlin-Paris and the Berlin-London. So we'll probably wait actually, so we need to, what's 2 times 17 is 34, so we need to wait to 34 million until we can get two of them in operation, which I think is what I'll do. So 34 million, we'll have that no problem by the end of this episode. We'll go ahead and we'll look in the bank later on, but I need to go ahead and start hiring more staff then if we're going to have more planes. So we'll run along to the personnel office, hopefully we're running anyway, and we'll go ahead and see who we can get our hands on. I'm also, in the last episode, I did say that I was looking for a fuel analysis person who basically just tells me when the best time is to buy fuel off the kerosene company, and I'm still looking for someone for that. So we have six applications for advisors, so, like, somebody must, somebody must, there we go, there is one, thank God. So we've got an oil and a kerosene advisor who is what I need. Um, a security manager, quite impressive, 8 foot woman. I'm going to hire all the advisors that I need to be honest. We've got a security manager, already got an informer, which is fair enough. Already got a financial advisor, which is fine. We need one of these, an oil and kerosene advisor, so I'll definitely take you on. A personal advisor I do need as well, and we're going to go ahead and take the very talented one. And I don't really know what you do to be honest, but... I'm sure you'll help me out in some way or form. I do have an image of what I want to do though, so and if an advisor tells me different, then I'm probably not going to do much different. I just need help with oil and finances. Those are the only two areas which I could really do with some help. Anyway, so I'm looking for advisors, I'm looking for pilots, and I'm looking for flight attendants. I'm looking for pilots to start us off. 
Only got two applications here though. Uh, okay, so this is basically said compared to the qualification, the salary is low. So that is a good, but then at the same time, too expensive, steer clear. I can afford expensive though, but gifted and above average. Neither of you guys are, or ladies, whoever you are, you aren't what I'm looking for, I don't think, for the time being. So we'll come back to that. What about flight attendants? We've got nine applications, so plenty here. So why don't we actually just go ahead and listen to our advisor? So qualifications are not too good, understandable, I would agree. Qualification for the salary is good, but the qualification isn't high enough. Moderately talented, the qualification isn't good enough. Qualification is good and the salary is low. I'm happy to take that. I'm happy to take a gifted. I don't know, talented. Compared to the qualification, the salary is good. Talented. Yeah, we'll take you. What else have we got here? So next, average. For the salary, I don't want average, so I want gifted or talented. Above average, not good enough. Very talented, we will take. And then what about gifted? I think we'll take you on as well. So that is you apply three at flight attendants without planes, and I know that, but I'm going to be buying more planes later on in this episode. So with all that done, let's see how our gates are doing. Two gates in action, one flight going out to Berlin and one flight going out to New York, Jifka. Let's go ahead and jump into the advertisers and just see how our overall airline image is doing. I know it's said in the briefing every morning, but I need to go ahead and actually see how it is doing with just in terms of things. So... I'm being stupid here. Let's go ahead and how's my airline's image doing? So, must be at 80% right now, which is good. But if we can go ahead and get that up to 100%, then we might as well do that. You know what I'm saying? So, I would like to improve my airline's image. Let's go ahead and slap a big gigantic campaign on it for 2.5 million. And that is all good. Uh, 2.5 million is a bit too much. I could convince him to discount 8%. After all, we're good friendly customers. You look interesting, actually. Um, but at the end of the day, I have the money, so I'm not, money's not an issue. And that's the thing that advisors aren't really understanding. So how's the security doing? I just want to make sure security is still in place, which it is. So let's go ahead and jump in and see what our, I guess, fuel person's advising us. So it look, doesn't look like you advise us from here. So we need to go down to the petrol air office and see what he can tell us. So first of all, I've not really dipped in, but I know one good thing is when the current price is low, that's when you want to buy. The average price is 500, so it's definitely very cheap. So let's go ahead and talk to you. Uh, I don't know what can you do for me. I think that is pretty much it. We'll supply you with kerosene and storage tanks. Okay, so tell me more about the tanks. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and buy the very maximum. And let's go ahead and buy 10 for 600,000. Might as well, yep. Let's go ahead and do that. It's a pleasure doing business with me, which is good. So I've gone ahead and bought that there. Uh, so 600,000 is a bit too much. I could convince him to give us a discount 8%. After all, we're good friendly customers. So next time we'll get a discount. Unfortunately, you weren't in the game quick enough there. But that's good. We'll get a discount going forward. So let's go back up to the office and let's go ahead and see what we've got here. So, the tanks are empty, planes will be filled at market price, but hopefully as of tomorrow they won't be. Or hold up, did we just buy tanks but not fuel? Let's run back down and see what is being said here. So what do we have? Um, tell me more about the tanks. So what about, I'll take the one with 10,000 gallons, but what tanks do we have? I need to work out what tanks do we have. Because I know we need fuel, but we can supply, we need this storage, I believe. So we have the tanks, or no, sorry, we have the tanks, but we need to go ahead and now get the fuel. So let's go ahead and how's the kerosene business. So we need to go ahead and fill the tanks up. So right now, top of the line, I'm probably just going to go for the normal stuff, to be honest. Let's go ahead and fill up our tanks, because we've got plenty of room. So let's go ahead and go with the normal price, which is... I'm pretty happy with that. That's nice and cheap. How many would you like? I would like to fill up my barrels, so... 
tank content, how much would it cost to go ahead and give that up to 100%. So we can go ahead and change this amount here. So how many barrels can we take? What about if we were to take a thousand barrels? Then that would fill up near enough. We might as well just go ahead and take 2000 and fill up our tanks. So that then would cost 500,000, which isn't that much. And let's go ahead and sign the dotted line. So that's us finally actually getting some fuel done. So that was a bit much. Can you just give us an 8% discount then? Because that would be really, really handy going forwards. I don't know how I activate that 8% discount, but we'll do it in the future. So contents of the tanks are currently not available for use. Planes will be filled at market price, but hopefully that'll change for tomorrow. Or sorry, so that's me changed it. So the contents of the tanks are currently available for use. Planes will be filled from the tanks. So we just need to monitor this and make sure the tanks are continuously full. So with that done, I think we've done a lot today. It's been a good day's work actually. So we're going to go ahead and probably skip a few days forwards with doing not a lot. So we're saving up for 34 million overall. So some more sabotage for other airlines, but our image is up to 86% and it's not gonna be long before it gets to 100. So let's go ahead and jump forward again another day. So we're at 27.5 million and then we come back in at, so we basically gained 5 million there. 4.5 million is what we gained overnight up to 172,000 passengers. So what we're gonna do today is jump down to the bank and look at hiring some more staff as well. So we'll start off with going to the bank because the bank is the more expensive thing. On our way though, we'll go ahead and check out the flight boards and see what is happening in the skies and it looks like it's just all us, which is great to see. So that's us into the bank now, and our share price is definitely the best. It is at $79, though it's not at its greatest. It was at $100 for a while, or near enough there. Phoenix, Travel and Sunshine Airways are bouncing around, that's for sure. Um, but no one's actually made any passes in selling shares, so we can't really do too much there, I'm afraid. So with nothing really being able to do there, uh, what we will do though is I think we'll go ahead and take this new gate because we need to go ahead and take it and I should have done it before now, but uh, I just, I guess I forgot and was distracted with other things. So let's run back upstairs and you can stand still, Phoenix travel and be a bit silly, but we'll go ahead and bid for gate seven. And then I think that is probably today's work done. So that will be us with five gates which is an adequate amount and I think everything is pretty good at this stage to be honest I don't think there's really much need to worry about anything else you're upset but I don't know what about so we'll need to keep on top of things going forward that's for sure but what we're going to do is just return to the office and again skip forward a few more days just because there's really nothing else to worry about so that's us up to 35 million. I'm just going to go ahead and actually just pause the video and I'm going to skip forward until I have about 50 million. Right, so there we go. So that's us into 50 million. So that's us got plenty of money available, which is good. So we do need to go ahead and I totally forgot about buying some more or buying some more hiring some more flight attendants and also some more pilots because we are going to buy some planes today. So don't really care about that. Uh, that is just a promotion for us. What is this? It's just another random promotion. We also have gate seven under our belt as well going forward, which is good. So everything seems to be doing fine. What is the route capacity is at 45% on the London to New York, so it can still get higher. Now the planes that we're gonna buy today are to help out the Berlin to Paris, which as you can see the route capacity is at 45%, so we can go ahead and help out with that. And the Berlin to London, it's at 28%, so I ideally want to get them up to 100. So let's go ahead and start off by, first of all, we can't go to the advertisers yet, we'll go ahead and hire some more pilots and also some more. I'm only gonna buy one plane. And there's a reason for that. So I'm just thinking about this. As I was talking there, I was thinking about this. And that kind of makes sense. Right now, the Berlin to London. Its demands must be quite high. So it's at 9,228. So basically 9,000, right? But the Berlin to Paris, your demand must be down at like 5,000. Or it's only at 3,000. And your capacity is already at 54%. 
So that's over half with a plane this small, right? So what my thought is, we can go ahead and maybe just assign both of these current planes, the Berlin London and Berlin Paris onto that route. And then what we'll do on the new plane is we'll go ahead and put the Berlin London onto just the new plane. That makes kind of sense. I think it does because there's no point in going ahead. The Berlin Paris is at 54% right now on a plane which it looks like here is basically it's always 152 then forward slash 2 or 1 pretty much okay. So right now if we go ahead and buy the new plane, the new plane has a capacity of like 390 or something like that. So the it would be wasted because really every single passenger on a plane, we're only looking for a plane which really needs about 300 seats to get that route capacity to 100% literally. So I don't think we need to go ahead and buy two planes or we'll start off with buying just the one. So knowing that, we probably don't need to go ahead and hire so many pilots or flight attendants. But let's go ahead and look at advisors. No applications to start with, which is a shame. Pilots, 10 applications. Too expensive. I don't mind about the price. Too expensive. I just need good pilots. I need good personnel. We've got four pilots doing nothing though. So I think we've got enough pilots for the time being. What about flight attendants? Let's go ahead and grab maybe about two more of these. Moderately talented, qualifications aren't good enough you're saying though, aren't good enough, gifted, yep, but I just want very highly gifted, gifted, I don't know what we're going to go for, we'll maybe take the two, we'll go ahead and probably take the two very highly gifted, because that's what my advisor is saying is pretty good. So with that done, let's go ahead and buy our new plane, which is about time. It's taking me a few days, but we're up to 55 million. And then on our way back, we'll probably hit up the bank and just see how everything is going in there. Don't think too much has changed though, to be honest. I'm not going to lie to you. So I'd like to buy an airplane and it's going to be the... Was it this one we're going for? Or no, it's the II or I don't think... I don't know if that's II or LL. But it's the 86 anyway, so this is what we need. So, got the crew, got the flight attendants all at the ready. 380 passengers, so one of these will be... One of these would be too much for the Berlin to Paris, and that's why we're going to go ahead and assign basically the two current planes we already have onto that, and we're going to move the London to Berlin passengers onto this plane going forward. So we'll go ahead and buy one of these. You only cost 17 million, so we could easily go ahead and buy two... I think we will buy two, but we'll not get both of them going straight away. We'll only get one of them going straight away. So you have, you don't have enough flight attendants, you need to employ eight more, which is totally fine. We're not going to get both of them in the air right now. So yeah, you could have got me an 8% discount, but how? Like, tell me how. That's something I really do need to know. So let me just go ahead and check the shares in the background. So our shares are totally fine. Sunshine Airways is totally fine and Phoenix Travel is totally fine. So nothing has really changed, unfortunately. We're going to return to the office and make all these changes to the flights. Lots of our flights in action again today, but it doesn't really seem to be other airlines in action, which is strange. One thing I want to go ahead and check here is the amount of flights. So their flight numbers are increasing and it looks like actually... They're really not picking up routes, it's really strange, they're still going down the orders line. An orders line obviously isn't making them that much money, or carrying much passengers if you know what I mean. Interestingly, where's our image at? Our image is at 96% as well, so holy shit. But interestingly, we're not actually winning on goodwill. That is something though that I do want to do, and our airline actually isn't the most profitable, or technically by value of stock, we're actually seconds behind Phoenix Travel, so... Everything is a bit all over the place right now. But let's go ahead and, oh god, start the changes here. So, first of all, we have a new plane which can't be used. And we have, so the Leipzig can be used straight away. So this is one of our new planes here which we're going to go ahead and, first of all, upgrade fully. So our Transatlantic 4 should all be, all the Transatlantic should all be at 3 stars. The Leipzig will... The Berlin Paris should all be at 3 stars, the London Berlin and so both of you first of all need to go ahead and get yourself up to 3 stars in all categories. 
So we can go ahead and do you Leipzig. So that'll cost 4 million to upgrade you. And then same with the Rems something in German, I'm guessing. So we'll go ahead and we don't have the right amount of flight attendants, but that is totally fine for the time being. So that'll cost another 4 million there. Now we're short on flight attendants. I'm going to go ahead and go next door and hire probably two flight attendants for the time being. So flight attendants, eight applications. Tell me what is good. Qualifications aren't good enough. Qualification is good enough, but not for the price. Gifted. It seems like gifted is, is maybe better than talented, actually. Good. Compared to the qualification, the price, I'm just wanting too expensive. Stay clear. That's totally understandable. Too expensive. I don't know. Really, no one's taking my appetite at all, to be honest. But, I mean, you've got no description. Above average. I don't want above average. So maybe leave that for the time being. My worry is here though that uh, the plane that we're going to get going first is the Leipzig. So we're going to have to do some flight renaming I guess. So temporarily we're going to change this to the Berlin Paris 2. Like so. And then what is going to happen is as of Thursday you're going to stop flying the London routes going forward. So I'm very quickly just going to go ahead. Well it's not going to be a very quick process but I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these. Let's just hope I'm actually going ahead and London Berlin's are getting removed off this. Yes, I'm doing this correctly. So that's me gone ahead and removed all of those flights. So on Wednesday, it's going to stop flying the London to Berlin's. Then on Thursday, it's going to take the day off. And then from Friday onwards, it's going to do the Berlin to Paris. The reason I've left Thursday off is because going forward, that's going to be the structured schedule, right? So from Friday onwards, if I forget to go ahead and remove all the flights out of Tuesday and Wednesday, then when I next check it, I'll know there'll be there'll be a gap there and I'll trigger my mind like, oh, why is there a gap there? That's very strange. And I'll be like, oh, that's why I need to update that. So that's why I've left Thursday empty. Plus, it gives the plane a bit of a rest, which is a good thing. So that's going to be adequate amount of, I guess, flying around for Berlin, Paris. So you should reach 100% of your capacity, which will be nice to see. So going ahead and renaming the Leipzig. The Leipzig is going to be the new London to Berlin. So I'm very quickly just going to go ahead and rename this. So this is going to be, I guess, the London to Berlin 1 because we are going to get the number 2 into action eventually, but not straight away. That's, I guess, just going to be in reserve and it's going to be out of action until we, you know, like, we'll get there. We'll get there, but there's no rush. So you're going to start properly from, I guess... So you've got the exact amount required. You've got two pilots and you've got five flight attendants, which is good. And there's no other crossovers or worries there. So you're actually good to fly. So London to Berlin, we will start you guys from tomorrow, I think, actually. So again, what I need to do, unfortunately, is go ahead and fill this whole thing up. Now, interestingly, the flight time is down to three hours because this plane can fly faster than the old plane because the old flight time was four hours I believe so that means that we can get an extra two flights in a day which is great so that means we might not necessarily actually need um this second plane here the rem shells which I think is how it's pronounced actually but that means if we don't need it then we can always go ahead and get another route there's no problem about doing that because we can easily go ahead and support that so let's go ahead and, well, you're not going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and fill this whole flight scheduling up now with London to Berlin's. Right, okay, so there we go. Again, that took way too long than it should have, but that is all good to go in the London Berlin 1. But one thing I do need to do is go ahead and very quickly jump into here in the London Berlin 1. So we need to go ahead and change its seating allocation and it needs to be at a 9 to 1. Every plane's going to have a 9 to 1 ratio, but that's just to make much more money. And as I said, we can now fit in 8 flights a day instead of 6 flights per day. So again, we can get more people moving. So for the first time probably since the start of this series, we've actually ended a day naturally. I've not gone ahead and skipped anything. It's actually reached the end of the day. So image is pretty much at 99% now, which is great. Over 200,000 passengers travelled, which is great. 19 million, which is also great. And I'm saying great a lot, aren't I? So let's go ahead and cancel the briefing. No needs. And again, it's not focusing on me for some reason. So let's go ahead and see 
how those flights are doing. So, as we can see, they're not even full, which is very interesting. So, what's the maximum amount you can take? You can take 343 second class passengers, and you're not even full yet. So, that is really, really, really strange, actually. So, you're making about 70,000 per flight, which is absolutely wonderful. Cannot complain. What is, and I know it's not going to give me an accurate reading I guess we could say but what is the route capacity it's at 28% so that is going to go up before it I guess stops but what I need to do now is go ahead and finally fill in this final week's scheduling which thank god I only have to do one day because the last time I did it it took me way 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 too long at least I've got a better way to do it now I guess um but just if this game like I realized I made a second version of this but if they can make a third version of this game like Airline Tycoon 3, that would be great because I've not played Airline Tycoon 2, but I read the reviews and supposedly they're actually it's kind of rubbish. But it's something that I might play one day, um, that's for sure. I've not really, I mean, there's a few games that are playing around in my mind right now. A new game which I think I'll do, which already might be out, I don't really know. I uh, schedule stuff randomly, I guess you could say. So anyway, the Berlin to Paris, you are continuing on as normal. You're constantly full, which is good to see. Then we need to go ahead and start removing you guys out. So Berlin to London, let's go ahead and remove you because you're now on the wrong plane. Then what we'll do, I think from tomorrow, we'll just go ahead and start getting this going. So you're going to be Berlin to Paris. So we'll get a few of you guys in, and it's now really tempting to go ahead and actually sell these older planes, and the reason is... Oh, hold up, I'm getting confused again here. So Berlin to Paris 2. The reason I want to sell these older planes is because, like, their flight time could be shorter, and that's just evident with the new plane we've got. So this is, sorry, I'm really getting confused now. So this is here, this is Berlin to Paris. So Berlin to Paris needs to go in here, so... Can't remember what the, uh... TXL, I think it's like TGL or something, the airport in Berlin. It's also got Schoenfeld as well, Berlin Airport, and then CDG is Charles de Gaulle. I know that for a fact as well. So Paris to Berlin, you are the return thing. And I know a lot about geography, that's why I know these airport codes. Uh, Paris also has Orly Airport as well. I don't think it has a third airport, or it might do, but it's not very large. Uh, but I do know a lot about airports, so I just know a lot about geography in general, to be honest. Probably way too much, but at times like this, it actually does come in kind of handy. So, it is good to know where countries are and when, especially when I was going ahead and taking orders off the board. It was definitely good to just know where places were. Don't get me wrong, there was one or two places which I was a kind of a little bit unsure of where they were, but most of them I knew. Anyway, let's go ahead and skip forward to tomorrow. And let's see how we're doing. So we're up to 24, 25 million. Jesus. Another briefing which we have to go ahead and sit through. Bad news. Been Bad news. There's been a sabotage on Phoenix Travel. And uh, Sunshine Airlines is responsible again. So they've done three sabotage incidents at least. And they've been caught. And they're getting fined again. So they got to give us a million dollars. They've now given uh, uh, Phoenix Travel two million dollars, I guess you could say. So... Oh, someone could have died. Anyway, that's enough of that. So we've got plenty of security, so we don't really need to worry about anything. Anyway, so that should be that in action now properly. So as we can see, Berlin to Paris, you're continuing now on the Berlin to Paris 1 and the Berlin to Paris 2, and you're pretty much full all round, which is good to see. So that route capacity on the Berlin to Paris should be at about 100% now. So it's at 54, but it is going to continue to go up. What about the London to Berlin? You're at 44%, but again, you're going to continue to go up because every flight is near enough full. 343 passengers, which is good to see. Anyway, I've blabbed on for way too long this episode, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this episode up here. My transatlantic flights are still doing extremely well, 400,000 all round. However, there's still room to improve on the New York to London as the route capacity is only at 46%. So we could definitely go ahead and buy some more transatlantic planes going forward, especially more galaxies. That is something to maybe look into in the next episodes. What I do want to do is very quickly just run down and check if anything has changed at the bank. I don't think anything has, but in case anything has, then we should probably go ahead and check out if anything has. 
if you get what I'm saying. So our share price is back up to over 100, which is good to see. That's where it belongs. But no other airlines have made any moves, unfortunately. So go ahead and wait and do some research in between this and the next episode and see if there's any tactics to go ahead and get them to sell their shares because really we're sort of just waiting on them now. We can do lots for ourselves. I mean, I guess we can go ahead and earn lots of money, but unless they start to sell shares, then we can't really, I guess, close out the series. As much as I'm enjoying myself, it's going to get to a stage where it's going to be getting very, very repetitive. Anyway, that's all for this episode, so thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, rating, subscribe if you are new around here. My name is Conflict Nerd Callum, and I'm out.